If you are building a home, you absolutely need to spend some time planning what your network and wiring inside your home is gonna look like. Home networking is not just for the techies nowadays, okay? It has become an essential part of life. Between working from home, kids playing at home, doing homework online, remote meetings, watching TV, streaming music, all those things play into our daily lives. And having your house, your home, have a good network that's conducive to be able to do those things from anywhere um, is extremely important. Now. Imagine if you didn't have electricity built in or HVAC or, you know, uh, you know, for your heating and air, how much different life would be. And you don't have to be an electrician or an HVAC uh, person to understand the importance of those things being built into your home. I'm adding network to that list. I think it's absolutely essential to, did, to today's living. So this video is going to be about that. We are going to try to educate and how do you plan for a network on a tight budget, big budget, whatever, how do you plan for a network in your new construction home with zero experience, okay? So we're gonna talk about it, tune in. Hey guys, my name is Tim Trich and welcome to the Ethernet Blueprint where we try to help people plan and build a great network into their new construction home. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about just that, how to do this when you have no experience. How do, where do you even start? You know, from the type of cabling and things like that to the type of equipment, whether you're gonna go big like this or something a little more simple like this, what your needs are. And we're gonna talk about how to actually put this all together. So when you get to that stage of the house, when you go do your walkthrough with your contractor and say, where do you want cables? You have an exact plan on where to do it. Now, before I get going on the video, I wanna point out there are some links in the bio. We have a course, we have just some PDF documentation, we have some things built to help you, really anyone, plan for building a network in your home. From the tools you need, the type of cabling, how to build heat maps for your Wi-Fi with just a floor plan, all sorts of things to help you. So if you're interested in just getting a little bit deeper dive than what this YouTube video is gonna be about, which is gonna try and stay pretty high level, um, guys, I invite you to take a look at those. So. Let's get started. Let's start talking about what you need to do, and we're gonna start at the beginning with your cabling. Okay, if you're a beginner at this, guys, and you're just getting started with this, and this is just some 101 information for you, let me tell you, you don't have to go crazy. There are a ton of videos on the internet and YouTube and talking about how you, know, you need fiber pulled in your home and stuff like that, and that can add a lot of cost. It adds a lot of a need for a lot of special equipment, special connectors, and I would argue that for the general population, the everyday user, the this is my last home I'm going to live in, this is the one I'm going to retire retire in type of house, you can get by with just regular old Cat 6. Now Cat 6 has become the standard today, so typically I will ask a builder if we're doing a consult if they use Cat 6. Um, and because that is our preference. Even if it adds a little bit of cost because it is more expensive than Cat5, um, typically, but the cost is very, very marginal. And so we typically will ask for Cat6. So if you're gonna be doing a, some planning in your home, go ahead and plan on putting Cat6. Now, what about Cat7, Cat8? You've done a little bit of research, you see those kind of buzzwords around, and those are options too, if you want them. But really where those type of cabling come into play where that type of cable comes into play is either powering like high power cameras or you're going to be doing some really really fast networking in your home and there's a need for your internal network to be much faster than a quote-unquote standard gigabit network and I would argue that most of you out there who are checking Facebook streaming your live TV streaming music the everyday home user for the most part really will be able to get by for several years on cat 6 now there may be a day when we're watching TV with holographic images being in our living room and stuff like that. And that may require some more juice or fancier cabling. However, for today's standards, you really don't need more than Cat6. And uh, you're welcome to leave comments below. Um, there are some definitely, there are definitely some things where bigger, bulkier cables do come into play. However, if you can step back and say, I'm just kind of a regular Joe, I'm a regular user, chances are 
you'll be fine with Cat6. So go ahead and plan, talk to your builder, make sure that they're using Cat6 in their build. Okay, so let's kind of talk about the general components you need to look at to build Wi-Fi or build your network into your house, okay? You're gonna need a router. The router is what runs your entire network. That's what gives your network a different space on the internet than your neighbors all around you, okay? So you're gonna need some kind of a router in your home. You're also gonna need a switch. So if you pull cables throughout your house, everything's gonna run back and plug into a switch. The switch is what ties it all together. Now there are a lot of flavors of switches and managed versus unmanaged, PoE versus non-PoE, and we'll get into some of that here, but you're gonna need a switch. The route, the internet comes in, plugs into your router, your router plugs into your switch, and then your switch runs all of your devices, okay? Now, you're gonna need Wi-Fi. Now, my recommendation, the thing I love, and what we're gonna focus on in this video is using wireless access points for your Wi-Fi, okay? So a wireless access point can be, it comes in lots of shapes and sizes. I do feel you get the biggest bang for your buck if you are planning on putting ceiling mounted access points in um, throughout your home. That's gonna, one, they're up and out of the way. You probably won't even notice them. Uh, you don't have to set it on something or put a plant in front of it, just like that, that sort of thing. Um, they're just up and out of the way. It allows you to get Wi-Fi outdoors, indoors, on each level of your home, very, very easy. Everything's completely upgradable. You can just pop down the old access point, pop up a new one, add it to your system and you're up and running. So I really feel you get the most bang for your buck by using an access point, but there's a lot of ways to get Wi-Fi. Obviously you can go down to Best Buy and buy yourself a mesh system and set those out or hardwire them together. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do this, but for this video, I want to focus on access points. So you have your router, your switch and your access points. That is what we're building here. That's what we're designing. Whether you build something shiny like this or have stuff sitting on a shelf like that, that's what we're talking about here, those, those simple components. All right, so you're to the part of your build where you're gonna go meet your builder and his cable person, the electrician, whoever comes along on this, and you're gonna talk about where you want cabling pulled in your home. So we're talking about the Cat6, okay? So you'll want to have a plan prior to that date. Right? You, you don't want to just start going and poke it, kind of have a game plan. It's, a, it's one of the exciting parts about a house is designing it ahead of time, right? How you're going to lay out your furniture and how you're going to do things. That plays into this process. Okay, so have a plan. That's the big part here. All right, so you get to the day and you're going to go walk around with them. Where, where do we put jacks in your home? Okay, where, where do you need Ethernet pulled to? Where do you need Cat6 at? So the first big place we recommend is anywhere that you have a TV. Um, streaming isn't going anywhere, guys. Gaming isn't going anywhere. This is how we're gonna watch TV in the future. Um, the traditional way of watching TV is going kind of by the wayside. So we definitely recommend any place you have a TV, make sure you have an ethernet connection, okay? And, and for rooms that can have multiple configurations, right? Let's say a master bedroom and you have your bed on this side of the room and then, you know, five years down the road, you move it to this side of the room. Well, if if you only pull Ethernet to one side, then, you know, now your TV is behind the headboard. So maybe plan, plan for that. Will you ever rearrange your room? Would there ever be a need for um, Internet to be on different places? You can always put a picture frame or something covering the one you're not using. So try to think about configurations for these TVs. The other thing I want to point out is a lot of living rooms or basements in the Midwest anyway, um, will have like a TV over the fireplace. Okay. With nothing up there, just very nice, clean, polished look, all the tubing and stuff, um, goes down through the wall. And then there's like a built-in cabinet off to the side where you'd put your components, your cable components, your DVD player, your PlayStation, things like that. So we typically recommend having a jack up behind the TV. You're going to need power up there anyway. So, you know, having a jack up there and then also down in the component areas, two separate runs or for sure a tube that you can use um, to pull a cable up from down below up to the TV regardless. But we recommend actually just doing one of each. Um, that way you could even hide an Apple TV behind your TV or something like that. But if there's no room, just seriously, having a cable in each location. So those type of things you wanna be thinking about as part of your build, so you can be ready for it, okay? The next thing is an office. We really, really recommend having um, cable pulled to an office 
um, in regards to where you're gonna work. Think about how your office is gonna be laid out. Think about where the desk is gonna sit, what size of desk you have, what shape it is. Does it sit in the middle of the room or is it up against a wall? Where do you need your jacks at? And what all do you need to plug in, okay? Because, you know, a typical office is gonna have at least a computer and it's gonna have at least typically a printer, a lot of them do. Um, and maybe you have a scanner or some other things going on there. Maybe you and your spouse are sharing the room. So there's going to be kind of two desks. Uh, we see that all the time. So think about where your cabling needs to be, where your jacks need to be for your office. That's another really, really big one and important one uh, in your home. And then I would say special stuff. Now, so there's when I say special stuff, that can cover a whole gamut of things. There's Maybe some people have pools in their backyard. There's some special ethernet requirements for some of the pool equipment sometimes. I've seen golf simulators in houses. Um, you know, does any of your sound equipment require ethernet a phys and have ability to plug in a physical ethernet connection? So some of that audio stuff, you know, nowadays isn't all Wi-Fi. It's all, you know, can plug into the network. So it's things like that. Do you have a theater? Is there a special theater room that you're going to have where you need some special... Uh, configurations for your network, or not necessarily special configurations, but maybe an extra cable. You run two or three cables there because you never know what kind of components you're going to need. So those type of things you want to try and think about ahead of time, those special circumstances. Hot tubs plug in nowadays. I've seen even smoker grills plug in to Ethernet, which is kind of crazy. So um, all those kind of play into it. And then you're also going to need, you know, are you going to do cameras, right? So I would pull Ethernet to camera locations. Even if you aren't going to do cameras today, I would still pull the cables during the building process because it's the most affordable way to do it. And you can always just leave that cable up in the eave or wherever you have them and pull them down later when you decide to add cameras. But definitely cameras would be a big one. And lastly, I want to talk about is your access points. You're going to need to pull an Ethernet cable to your access points. Okay, so if you have a three level home, I would recommend having one pulled to each level. If you have a really long home, your, level, your home might need to have two on one level, just kind of depending on how it's laid out. If you have a fairly open floor plan, it, you'll get signal to more places easier than if you have a bunch of rooms or skinny hallways, okay? That all plays into this. And I'll point out here, even though I pointed out earlier, um, I do have a course on how to plan your Wi-Fi in your home, how to draw yourself a heat map. You just upload your floor plan. Um, it's a ubiquity driven tool, but it can really work with anything. And I, and I talk about that in the course. Uh, I think it's $47 and you can actually map this stuff ahead of time, know how many access points you need to buy and sort of that sort of thing. Um, so it's a really good tool there for you guys to use if you plan on using access points. But you're going to need an Ethernet cable pulled to each one. That's how they get their power. That's how they get their network. Okay, so TV locations, office locations, any special requirements that you need, and your access points. Now, when you start thinking about that, that depending on number of rooms you have, number of people you have, all that stuff, you might have 20 some cables being pulled, right? So, um, it is cheaper now to pull them at this stage in the game than it will ever be to add them later. And I will stand behind that <laughs> forever. I've been doing this far too long. It's expensive to have someone come in and try and fish cable down a wall or through a ceiling. It can get really expensive. So have the cable pulled now. You'll appreciate and be glad that you did. Even if you don't add cameras for five years down the road, uh, you'll be glad the cables are there waiting for you. Or to be honest with you, if you end up selling the house, the next homeowner may be really glad there's cables there. So it adds value to your home. There's really no downside to doing it, all right? So when you do that walkthrough, have a game plan on where things are gonna go and have it ahead of time. Don't be making it up on the fly, okay? All right. Okay, so the next thing you wanna think about is where are all those cables? Now you have your locations, where are they all gonna be pulled back to? Now, I call this your network head in. This is the area where all of your cabling comes back to, okay? So if you were using something like these, these would be your network head in. There'd be a shelf, all the cabling would come down and plug into your equipment. That's why we call it the network head in. Now you have the option of putting your router here as well. If you want to, sometimes people will put the router in the office and then just connect it through a wall jack down to the switch. But the point of it is, is all your cables come down to one place and then they will be terminated 
in some way and then plugged into your switch so every jack in your home is hot. So when you put that TV up, you'll connect it with a cable and it'll have internet just like that. It doesn't have to rely on the Wi-Fi. So uh, where's all this cable gonna pull down, pull back to? So where do you wanna locate the network head in your house? Now, a lot of people like to stick them in cabinets uh, and a lot of builders will give, throw in this enclosure. It's basically a built-in enclosure that's about four to six inches deep has a door over the top and it allows you to hide all your stuff. I personally hate them. I think they're garbage. Um, so if your builder's including that, tell them that you'd like to do something else. An open frame rack, this rack right here was $85. Okay, so we're not talking a lot of expense here. This shelf, <laughs> you can do for half that, you know, 45 bucks with the hardware and stuff. So this is a lot easier to work on than those enclosures. The enclosures, just come with a lot of challenges. One, you can't stack anything in front of them. Two, you can't move things around. Three, it's hard to make them look nice. It's hard to trace cables. There just isn't a lot of room. And I would argue that it limits the size of equipment you come on. I see modems from the internet provider that come, they're like this big around, wouldn't even fit in there anyway. So what are you gonna set that on the floor and run a cable up through the door and then all your other stuff's inside there? It just doesn't make sense. They're not user friendly and I would avoid them if it all costs. Now, a lot of builders will throw them in because they they see it as being forward thinking, but it, I've talked so many people or I've talked to so many people that said, yeah, my builder's gonna have one of those. And I said, please ask them if you have any other options. Can you do something different? Um, just to get rid of it because you will not like it. I promise you, they're just, they're just a pain. They really, really are. Um, so, but you gotta have, you do need to pick a location. Um, in the Midwest, our basements make great options. It's cool in here, there's a lot of room. We have our furnace area over here. It's a utility room. Usually they're pretty wide open. There's plenty of, there's usually some wall space where we can add our network cabling and it'll be out of the way so guests don't see it. But there's a lot of homes that don't have basements. So you need to find some place in your home where the, those cables can be pulled, okay? So you need to locate a head end. Once you have those components, that part of your build planned, then we can get into what equipment you're gonna need and how to put this together, whether you're on a budget, you wanna spend a little extra money and buy some nice stuff. We're gonna talk about that next, but you need to have a game plan where you need cables pulled, what type of equipment you need plugged in, what's one thing I forgot, outdoor Wi-Fi, right? You might need to entertain someone out around a pool or a hot tub or just a big landscaped area, nice landscaped area. Okay, Wi-Fi might put an outdoor access point on there. You're gonna to wanna to run a physical cable to those locations. So once you get your game plan together, once you kind of get to see what this thing's gonna look like, then you can move on to the next part with your equipment and some of the things like that. But have a game plan, make a list, make it messy. Just start scribbling some stuff down. Yes, it's gonna add cost to your build and I know you're being nickeled and dimed as this thing goes together. And this is just another thing on the list, but I promise this will pay dividends. Remember what we said in the beginning, this is an essential part of life. You will use your network all the time, every day. So build it in and have a game plan for it.